Welcome back, I'm Raven, and this is the fourth devlog in a series about my solo game project Relay. My last devlog in this series was about two months ago now, and it's been a super productive two months. I started a new term of college and got a whole lot done on Relay. I've added save and load support, a pause menu, a bunch of new content, and even more. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first major change I've made is that of the main menu. It now has a redesigned logo instead of just text, and I think the environments look significantly better after some general redesigns. I've also added the settings menu, adding support for configuring controls, and more. You may also notice the new load game button for replacing the simple new game button, which ought to serve as foreshadowing for the next exciting feature. Next up, I've finally gotten around to adding proper save and load support to Relay. This includes the ability to save and load the game normally, as well as a quick save and quick load feature inspired somewhat by my recent binge of Crowbar Collective's Black Mesa. Black Mesa also really inspired me to spice up the intro sequence of Relay, something I've been working on a lot in the last couple weeks. Relay's new introduction sequence should serve to flesh out the story a little bit more. I feel this is important seeing as Relay is a story game at heart. Without mincing words, the beginning of the game now features a high-speed train. I based this a bit off of the introduction of Half-Life 1 while still trying to put as much originality into it as I could. The train canonically runs between Leviathan Corporation Post Aurora and Post Desolation, two of the primary locations in Relay's story. When it's fully completed, you will wake up from sleeping on the train a minute or two before it pulls into the station at Post Desolation. From there, I've added a train station and an elevator stop to the beginning of the level, which means you can now properly en enter and exit the elevator without any weird animation trickery. Along those lines, I finally got around to improving the elevator ride on the way into the Relay Project. Previously, you just faded in from black into the elevator and all the walls were, like, opaque. There was no real sense of motion and the entry just didn't make sense, so I went ahead and made the back walls glass. This, I think, really contributes to the feeling of motion in the elevator since it felt generally very static before. This also included adding the entire elevator shaft to the game as the elevator would previously just, like, shake in place rather than actually moving. The addition of that of that much new geometry to the game, of course, required some level of optimization, so I added a new system for occlusion culling. I've often found Unity's occlusion culling to be lacking for most of my purposes. While this is likely not the case for many games, and I still highly recommend it, I've found the performance cost to be much more than the value provided. For that reason, I've written my own, much simpler and more primitive solution, which simply disables and enables certain regions of the game when the player is out of their line of sight. These regions are predefined in the editor, which gives me a considerable amount of control over when certain parts of the game are visible. Unfortunately, the manual aspect of the new system does leave room for error, resulting in the occasional visual artifact or disappearing environment. Up next is something I'm super excited about, new content! I've been working hard to add more regions to the map of Chapter 1, and this includes a variety of cool environments. I'm still trying to maintain the stylized aesthetic that Relay has, and I think I'm doing that fairly well. So far, I've added a really interesting glowing base with, like, three-phase power cables to the bottom of the giant test chamber, a ladder leading down to the maintenance tunnel, and a whole train station for the intro. In the future, I'm going to expand the maintenance section, as that's where the story will progress, and I'm looking to add more than just tunnel to the train introduction sequence. I want to show off a variety of both natural and man-made environments during the train ride, as well as providing a bit of background and lore on what makes LC different. If you saw the recent demonstration video on the Subsurface Studios YouTube channel, you'll probably be understandably a little confused about what Slight Mapper is and why it's relevant. For that reason, I'm going to go into a bit more technical detail on why it's important for Relay. If you're not interested in the more technical bits, skip to the timestamp on the screen now. Alright, now that that's out of the way, it's time for some basic graphics programming fundamentals. A quick disclaimer, I am by no means a graphics programmer or tech artist. I am not trying to pitch this as a tutorial or replacement for learning these concepts on your own. That said, I found this sort of like conceptual understanding to be greatly beneficial even when not doing graphics work, so I'll explain it here regardless. If there are glaring factual errors, 
please feel free to point them out in the comments and I will add them to the pinned errata comment. That said, you do not need to be super pedantic unless you really want to. In essence, for a modern hardware accelerated renderer, you have a program called a shader. This program runs on the GPU or graphics processing unit. This is distinct from your CPU in that it can do a lot more work in parallel, but not necessarily as complex of work. Meanwhile, your CPU can do significantly more complex work, but only in series with some, cave with some caveats. For this reason, we defer graphics work to the GPU because it usually involves a lot of data that is typically independent of other data. Case in point, pixels don't normally rely on the color of other pixels. Back to shaders, shaders operate on points on an object called vertices and the pixels of the screen. The so-called vertex shader operates on the vertices of an object, moving them around and then projecting them onto the screen. From there, the GPU converts all the vertices and triangles of the scene into pixels in a step called rasterization before running the, quote, pixel shader. This program runs for every pixel on the screen and determines the color that is presented to the user for that pixel. Now, for this reason, we have effectively three ways to do lighting in Unity. One is to perform the lighting calculations for each vertex of the object. Another is to do this calculation for every pixel of the screen. Lastly, we can use an image called a light map to store all the light information of an object before we actually render it in a process called baking. Light mapping is usually the fastest of the three, with vertex lighting in second place and pixel lighting being the slowest. While pixel lighting produces great results, it does so by calculating the light data an immense number of times, which can greatly reduce the performance of a game. In contrast, vertex lighting runs only for each vertex of each object in the scene, making it usually much more efficient. Unfortunately, this efficiency comes at the cost of visual fidelity. Most objects will have less than one vertex per pixel, resulting in some pixels not having any lighting data. For this reason, we have to interpolate between the lighting data of nearby vertices in a process that may not necessarily reflect the true lighting conditions of the pixel. Light mapping provides a way to achieve cinematic level visual fidelity while retaining extremely high performance as all the calculations are done by the developer before shipping the game. Light mapping has one dra major drawback, however, and that is that all the lighting data is static. If you turn off a light in the scene, all the objects will stay illuminated because the texture storing the lighting data does not change. This issue is where Slight Map comes in. Slight Mapper allows us to swap the light maps in use in the scene in real time, allowing for effectively dynamic lighting while still retaining the visual fidelity and performance of pixel and vertex lighting respectively. For that reason, I developed Slight Mapper as a tool for Subsurface Studios and published the source code openly on GitHub. It seems as though there's not many free and simple solutions for swapping light maps at runtime in Unity, and I wanted to change that. If you're interested, all the code is, is licensed under the unlicense, which effectively releases the code into the public domain. If you're interested in using it, you can do so free of charge and without crediting me or Subsurface Studios in any way. I've put a link on the screen and in the description to the repository if you'd like to check it out. I hope you enjoy it if you get the chance. All that said, let's get back to Relay. Another issue I was noticing in Relay is that the saving system was somewhat unclear. It wasn't evident when you could and could not save the game, so I added a simple icon to the HUD that shows when you cannot save. I also made it quickly flash red when you try to quick save and can't. I tried to base a lot of the UI in Relay off a car's dashboard in some way, as it needs to be clear and visually concise. I also want to integrate it into the story in a number of ways, but talking about that quickly turns into Spoiler City, so I'm going to move along. Next up is the newly implemented pause menu. This should be fairly self-explanatory. It allows you to save the game, load the game, exit to the menu, quit to desktop, and change your settings. I added this for fairly obvious reasons, and I essentially just copied the style of the main menu. I also made it so that way whenever you quit to the menu or desktop, the game will always be saved before you exit. I really, really don't want players losing progress because they pushed the wrong button, so I'm doing my absolute best to prevent that. I've also added another music track and a little sting effect to the game. I'm hoping that these will be helpful for cinematic effect. Have a listen.
Well, that's about it for now. If there's anything major I missed, please feel free to let me know in the comments. If you'd like to have a discussion about Relay with me or just want to hang out, make sure to join the Subsurface Studios Discord server. The link is on screen and in the description, check it out. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.